Kelly, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Kelly, ho, ho, ho. Thanksgiving's coming up. Make sure you check your turkey for razors. <laughs> you never know. Those family get togethers can get pretty cruel. You never know when they're. I won't yell. <laughs> you never know when they're trying to knock you off, you know? How about it? Well, don't you hate visiting the grandparents, seeing the grandparents on Thanksgiving? Huh? I mean, is it? The ground's frozen. You know how hard it is to shovel through six feet of soil to pull that old bitch out? <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's cold. Can't we just wait for springtime to see Grandma? The shovels are not doing too good. Dad threw his back out. Oh, what are you gonna do? Church pierogies, huh? Am I wrong? Church pierogies. You ever have a, you know what church pierogies are? Why can't we just call them pierogies or homemade pierogies or Polish pierogies? Why do they have? Why can't we have secular, non-religious, affiliated, atheist pierogies? Church pierogies. Charles C. Brown, give it up. Church pierogies. And I thought if you swapped the word church and pierogi and you called it pierogi church, we could have a whole different meaning to that concept, you know? Like the forbidden fruit. Eve oh, picked a pierogi off of it. Uh, God was raining down pierogies on the Israelites when they were wandering around for 40 years and 40 nights. Jesus turned water into pierogies. Pierogies. Church pierogies. I want to take back a secular pierogi. I don't want my pierogies to have any affiliation with your deities. Thank you very much. God died for your sins, not your pierogies. Thank you. You're welcome. Blumpkin. Hey, what are you doing over there? You looking at Blumpkin porn there? You know what the best thing about giving a Blumpkin to your loved one? You get them coming and going. <laughs> coming and going. <laughs> Rodeo. You don't talk about it enough, I think we need to address the elephant in the room. Rodeo. Am I wrong? Did you ever go to a rodeo? <laughs> if you did, they can actually say, this is your first rodeo. <laughs> you know when you go to your second rodeo? After you went to your first rodeo? When you go to your second rodeo, they can say, this is your first rodeo. I like to think about the wise people that sat around a business trying to jazz up attendance for their town town hall fair affairs out where there's cowboys and bulls and stuff. And somebody's like, you know, I got this idea. That was here. You know how them bulls got balls on them? I'm listening. We take a rubber band. We tie it around the balls of this bull. Pisses the thing right off. It pisses it off. It's jumping around, galloping up and about. And we get a cowboy. We get a cowboy, all dressed up like a cowboy, to ride the pissed off bull with his balls tied up in a rubber band. And so he's like, I like what I'm hearing, but sounds problematic. It might prove dangerous. Now listen here. We get a clown. <laughs> I help the bull forget. I help that bull forget his tight little balls are tied up in a rubber band. We get a fancy looking little colorful clown just to piss it off even more. That cowboy would have a fucking chance of getting up on top of that damn thing and ride that ball up on it to the bed down. I'm not how I get it out. Chinaman. I was talking to her. She's always going off. Why am I always going off about Chinaman? I like to talk about, like, scenario. We're not going to say Chinaman, right? Scenario here. You order a pizza. There's a ding dong on the door. And you, well, who's there? A pizza. I ordered pizza. I ordered pizza. Well, who are you? The pizza man. So let's say you want some fancy porcelain with nice little paint jobs. You want some plates to come over to your house. You ordered some fine china. Who, who's at the door? <laughs> the china man. Right? We can take it back. It's contextual. You're so quick to judge. Only words is attacking the Asian community. No, I ordered plates. <laughs> and the man that brought the plates to my door is a Chinaman. Um, if he happens to be of Asian persuasion, I will not address it because I don't care what color, creed, or nationality the person delivering the plates to my door is. I don't see color. I just see plates. <laughs> <laughs>
Speaking of pierogies again. <laughs> church pierogies, am I wrong? There should be a separation of church and plate. <laughs> Chinamen. That would be a great nickname for a gynecologist, though, am I right? <laughs> Chinamen. All the watermelons can sleep better at night. Gallagher is dead. <laughs> Anybody know who Gallagher is? Oh, yeah. oh, you do? Okay. Do you ever wonder how Gallagher started his career? Do you think he just went right straight for the watermelon and the sledgehammer? Where he worked his way out? Going to <laughs> shitty little freezing cold open mics like these? And, and not with the water. That's, that's big dick energy. A little cocky on an amateur level. He just brings a grape and flicks it. Knowing <laughs> someday he's working his way up to that watermelon in a mallet. Till then, he's flicking grapes. <laughs> Flicking grapes, huh? Bet you wish you came up with that one. <laughs> you know how when there's a, someone at the mall, they get a heart attack and they fall down at the mall and someone says, Oh my God, is there a doctor in the house? Uh, yeah, you guys ever seen that? Ever seen that in the movies? Yeah. Imagine a scenario in which a bull is running amok because its testicles are caught inside a little rubber band. And this bull is pissed off as shit. That's when you say, oh my god, is there a rodeo clown in the house? How many marks have a great day?